Okay, so let's start now working on the grid that's gonna display all of our days. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is create a, a kind of a container here. I'm gonna to want to kind of constrain the dimensions of the actual uh, kind of grid instead of it being kind of either oversized or anything like that. So a great thing about a container, remember, is that you can set fixed width and heights there to constrain whatever child that you actually have with inside that particular uh, kind of container. So let's just choose container here on the row. Let's now move over to the right-hand side here. Let's now set some properties of this. So the width is gonna be 320 like that. And then the height is going to be very specifically 202. We're going to take off the fill color, so just choose the option here. We don't want a fill color here, and I can then just say clear color. Uh, there we go, that's all done. Um, and that's, I think, everything that we need to do on this particular container. I think that's all now set up nicely for us. Now we've got that, we now can add in the grid view widget now with inside here. So just press the plus on here and just type in grid, and then we've got the grid view. Choose grid view, that's all now nicely placed for us. So on the right hand side, let's now choose and set some properties here. So the cross, uh, the cross um, axes count now. Now this now needs to be seven because we've kind of got seven kind of kind of columns here representing every day of the week. So just choose a seven here. And then of course with our kind of our spacing, we're gonna kind of wanna be very specific about our spacing here to keep it uniform here. So in this particular example, I'm just gonna put 18 in here and then the main access spacing here is then gonna be 12. So of course you can just see as I kind of reduce these here, if I just change this here, you can see where the main axis spacing kind of applies. You can just see if I just bring this up to four, you can see we're getting a bit more sort of space at six and eight. You can see here, this is the kind of the, uh, the kind of the distance between these particular rows here that we're kind of impacting. So just with the main access, just choose that back to 12 here. Um, everything else remains pretty well much as it remains. And um, we're gonna shrink wrap everything. We're just gonna kind of collapse this up a little bit. Not that it really makes a big difference here. We're going to kind of take up the kind of the minimum amount of space here. And of course we take primary off as well um, for us. So that is then all pretty good. We're not gonna kind of be scrolling this or anything like this. Um, although we could keep primary on if we wanted to there, if that's kind of like the only scrollable kind of widget that we got here, but we're gonna keep that one turned off. We're not too worried about that. So finally then, I just want to move over to the padding. Let's put 24 here from the left and 24 here from the right. So that looks like now that um, we're almost in position to uh, kind of have everything set up now to for, for actual grid view. But what we need to do now is obviously put then a child widget in there, okay. So let's first do that. Let's just press the plus here. Let's add another container in here. So we can move over to our kind of our width and a height. So I'm just gonna choose 24 here on the width and 24 on the height. So it's gonna be quite important here to keep these sizes the same as of course the sizes here, because if we don't do that, then as the grid kind of populates all of those particular days, then it's gonna kind of, the space is all gonna kind of go out. So you wanna make sure that they're set both the actual same. Now with our fill color, let's just remove that for now. We're gonna come back and do some customization on our colors very, very shortly, because it's obviously gonna be very dependent on some conditions that we're going to want to apply there same with our border and all that kind of stuff so we can come back and fill those in pretty shortly so I'm just going to scroll down here the final one we want to set of course is our child uh, sort of alignment we're going to make sure that everything is in the center there and of course with every container we need to put something in it so of course we're now going to put the kind of the text in there so just hit the plus on here and go to the text widget this is going to represent each of the numbered days of the uh, the, the actual days of the month Okay, let's move over to the right hand side. Let's set some properties. Let's just drop that to then maybe label large. Everything else is looking pretty good for us. We don't need to make any changes there. We'll come back very, very shortly and we'll probably adjust some of these particular properties here and we'll put some conditions around it depending on what we would like it to and how we would like it to look. Um, next up then, what we need to then do is then work on the next kind of row in our application which handles the kind of the, the back and forth buttons here. So let's now go and do that now. Okay, so let's just collapse our widgets down here on the left hand side to give us a little bit more sort of room so with inside the column itself let's add a brand new container in here let's just drop that in there you can see that at the bottom here let's just remove the width out and then let's remove the height and say it's going to be 40 like that so no longer 100 um, and what we're going to do we're going to add another row in here just hit the row and of course that will then push everything out um, so just one thing to mention actually previously I set the width to the, of this to be 320 that is actually not needed because of course it, um, everything is going to kind of be expanded 
expanded out the grid view sort of vert sort of horizontally actually so you don't need to worry about at all about putting the width in there and of course we're controlling the overall size of our calendar by using the actual container here by setting the explicit sizes of that so I didn't need to do that and of course I haven't done it down here on this particular row itself let's remove the fill color just move down into here just use the eyedropper let's clear that particular color and of course now with inside our row we can now create our buttons so hit the plus here just type in our icon button just choose the icon button there and we're just going to move over to our theme style widget and set this one to be the icon primary so that will be the kind of the, the color and the look and feel that we need for the moment we just need to go in and set some of these other properties so let's just do that now so with our button size, that's fine. With our border radius, we're just gonna bring this in a little bit. We don't need to be quite as big as that. And then with our icon size, that's fine, but we just need to change the actual icon itself. So this is gonna be our next button. So let's try and find something that looks good for a next icon. Maybe it needs to be like a, I don't know, like a triangle. Can I look for something like that? Nope, let's try a play. There we go, that, that's looking pretty good. We'll go for the play arrow like that. So that's going forward like that. Now that is all looking good here on the right hand side, just checking the sizes here, make sure we are good. Yeah, I think that's good. So what we can now do is we now could duplicate this particular icon button like that. And we can, we've can we now got two. Now within our row, we can choose the row column here. We can now push everything out just like that, both sides. But you can see here that this particular icon button is currently pointing the wrong direction. Well, that's a simple solution for that is we can go onto the actual icon button itself we can uh, sort of wrap we can wrap a widget around it so we just right click on it and then we're going to say uh, wrap widget and I'm going to choose a transform like that so just with the transform there selected we can then rotate so I'm just going to type in 180 degrees here let's turn that completely the opposite direction and that's how we kind of uh, do that with a sort of icons that you can't don't kind of have the, the options available to you because I don't think I've actually got a, an arrow going back in the opposite direction as a simple transform it's absolutely fine there to do that Okay, so finally then with our row, let's now just set the padding here. So let's just put 16 on the left here and 16 on the right. That should be perfect for us. Okay, so that's pretty well much everything in place now from a kind of a UI perspective for a moment. What I'm gonna quickly do though is I'm just gonna quickly go through and rename all of those widgets. So I'm not gonna change anything but the names. I'm gonna quickly do that. And of course the full sample uh, kind of has those in as well. So I'm gonna quickly do that now and then we'll move on to the next bit. Okay, so now that we've got most of the UI work to do, let's just pop back to the home page and add our calendar onto the page. Hit the plus here, move over to the actual diamonds and then choose our calendar component. And once that's there, you can see it's now nicely positioned, ready for us now to move into the next part of this particular video, where we're now gonna start really putting the functionality into this particular component. So let's head over there now. Okay, so this is where it starts to get a little bit more interesting now where we start adding the intelligence into this particular component. So where do we start? Well, what we're gonna do, we're gonna create um, a data type now that's gonna kind of track for us the kind of the characteristics that we're gonna have against each of the day that's gonna be in this particular container. Now we need to track the, the kind of the day of the actual month itself. We need to track if it falls into the previous month or the next month. And the reason why we're tracking that is because we want to change the look and feel of the actual date itself by, by putting some conditional logic around that particular Boolean indicator. So if that date is in the previous month, then we want to turn it slightly gray. If it's in the next month, we also want to turn it slightly gray as well. So we can start adding the characteristics into that particular data type. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a series of these data types here to represent the calendar month. And this is where we're gonna use some low code in order to kind of generate us all of the days of the month. And we can then set those indicators as well. So it'll all come clear if that doesn't quite make sense as we start creating the actual component further. So the first thing we're gonna do is move over to the left-hand side, go to data types, and we're gonna create a brand new data type. I'm gonna give this data type a name. We're gonna call this one calendar day like that. And I'll hit create, and we're gonna add some fields in. So the first one we're gonna set is this is previous month like that. And this will be a Boolean uh, type. So just select that and hit create. And I'm gonna add another one in, and I'm gonna call this one is next month like that. If I could spell it right, is next month. And we're gonna set this also to a Boolean indicator, hit create. And then the final one we need to create is the actual calendar 
date itself. Now this is just going to be a simple date and time. Now we're only going to use the kind of the a portion of this date and time to display on the UI. I'll show you how to do that later, but we're going to track it as a full date for now. Hit create and they are all then now created. So what's going to happen a little bit further down the line is, is our piece of low code is going to kind of use this particular schema to kind of create all of the dates for our particular calendar component itself. It's going to, uh, it's going to use the is previous month and the is ne next month with inside that custom code there um, in order to kind of set it to the values that it needs which will then be interpreted then by the UI so we'll come and cover that a little bit later if that seems a bit of a mouthful but I'm sure it will all make sense as we move along so let's now move on to the next bit okay so just going back to the kind of the final application here let's talk a little bit about this particular area here because this is actually quite a quite a complex thing to do of course if you are not a kind of natural coder um you'll probably kind of struggle a little bit we're kind of putting this particular functionality together so where the world is now going to of course is ai um chat gpt is a perfect solution for creating the code that can create all of those particular dates that we need in there so what we're going to do is we're going to get chat gpt we're going to give it a prompt it's going to generate all of the code that we need we can then load that with inside a custom function itself and of course we can then render with inside the ui all of those particular days and of course we can then start hooking onto the result set of that and then start styling it up accordingly so um so what we're going to do let's now head over to chat gpt i'll show you a prompt um, that um, will generate that particular code and then we'll have a look at what it's generated i'll explain it briefly we'll move it back over into flow flow and then i'll show you how to hook onto that with inside that particular calendar area here so let's move over there now Okay, so here we are then in ChatGPT. I'm certainly not the best AI kind of prompt engineer there is. There's going to be far more better people out there who can describe this better. But you can see here, this is the prompt that I've got at the, at the top there. Now, I'm not going to kind of walk through the word for word in exactly what I'm saying, but really all I'm asking ChatGPT to do for me is go away, create me a Dart function, and I've called out specific names like get calendar for month. And um, what I've asked it to do is just really go away, um, return back to me all of the days of the month. Um, I've asked it to determine whether um, we're into the previous month or into the into the next month and make sure that we set the is a previous month and the is next month to either to be true or false so then at least then I know that the kind of the five rows that it returns back for me um, I can then have a full representation of the calendar so everything's going to start on a Monday so of course if Monday is like say like the third of the month then I know that the first and the second will be in the top left hand corner and that they will then be greyed out just as if we were at the end of the month where maybe 31 might be kind of in the the middle and then of course the first second or third could could then be at the bottom corner of the actual calendar itself that's what that particular kind of prompt is going to be kind of doing for us so what I've also um, one real important thing though um, is really just to make sure and I really kind of stress this enough is that you need to make sure that you call out the particular uh, kind of the, the the actual structure names that we set earlier with inside creating that custom data type so we call it calendar date we call this is previous month and is next month make sure that you include those in the actual prompt as well because then you know the code that will be written will be very very accurate to what we need and you can see here that we kind of got this one called calendar day struct in Flutterflow it adds on the word struct at the end of the actual data type name that we've given so just bear that one in mind but do call that out with inside this particular prompt and um, what, what this is now generated for us is is a very very highly accurate piece of code that we can now just literally lift now and put that into Flutterflow you do not need to be a coder to kind of really work out what this is doing so long as the prompt that you pass in is, is descriptive enough to get the result that you absolutely need and of course if you don't quite understand what it's producing here then feel free to copy and paste this back into chat gpt and say hey look i'm a beginner please do explain this to me in, in a beginner's context and then i should give you a little bit more of a clue of exactly what is going on so what we're going to need them for our flutterflow application is really just this bit in the middle okay we don't need the kind of the top line or the kind of the closing curly brace there and we certainly don't need this bit here because this is just what's been generated for us by chat gpt but of course flutterflow would have already have kind of created something very very similar to this itself so we're just going to need to copy this area out here the flutterflow is going to create the kind of the top line for us automatically so let's just right click say copy and then now let's move over to flutterflow and let's create the function that's hopefully going to return back all of these days for our calendar Woo! 